Hey, everybody, it's Mike from Here are the Watchmen. And, you know, today I am so excited. I mean, I have a couple of filmmakers on our show today. These guys are amazing. I met them at Here are the Watchmen in Dallas, Texas. Uh, both of them are great young guys who are out there fighting the good fight for Jesus. I have with us Thomas Dunn and Jared Cressman. Their website is Into the Dark. Uh, they, they did a film. The film is detestable. You can see, like, I've actually seen it. I've actually watched it. It's an amazing film. It gets into some, some tough topics, some tough topics. It contains graphic testimonies of abuse, uh, the satanic, and these guys are right out there on the forefront fighting the good fight, uh, going to the places like Russ Dizdar does that we don't want to go. Uh, Thomas and Jared, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us, Mike. Appreciate it so much. Well, guys, before I get started, I got to take care of a little business. Um, don't forget, folks, come to Dallas, Texas, March 22nd through the 25th, 2018. It is the third time that we will be there hosting the Hear the Watchman Conference, an amazing lineup of speakers. We expect to be announcing someone that will knock your socks off here in the next week or so. Go to hearthewatchmanmen.com, get set up for it. It is March 22nd through the 25th, 2018, at the Hilton DFW Lakes Executive Conference Center and Hotel, same place we've been before. These conferences and these guys that we're talking to today, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you, it'll change your life. Um, other than that, I, I, I'm going to be in big trouble if I don't bring this up. Uh, this is Pastor Paul Begley and Hear the Watchman. We have joined up to do a tour of Israel. It'll be in October. Just simply go to Pastor Paul Begley's website. Uh, I think it's just uh, Pastor Paul Begley Ministries. Just Google him or go to our website. Check it out and see what's going on. So now let's get down to it, guys. Listen, I've seen your film. I've watched the work you've done. What led you to go down this path? Well, um, Mike, for the longest time, for over 20 years, I wanted to be a filmmaker. And I had no interest really in using it to, to help people. I just want to make movies that, that inspired people that I thought was good art. I met Russ Dizdar about 10 years ago. I thought, okay, here's a good topic. And again, not really interested in... in the uh, the ministry aspect of it, but just wanting to make film. Russ took me under his wing, and he said, "Hey, come with me if you're really interested in this stuff." And I did, and the film got put on a back burner. And I began doing counseling and ministry and meeting the real people. And then, after so much time, it was time to make the it was time to make the movie. So th that's what we did. Well, it's yeah, awesome. I, I mean, it's a it's a great movie. Now, Jared, how did you get connected with it? The same thing. I, you know, I've been in deliverance ministry for a long time, and I ended up getting into a case that involved a young girl dealing with uh, satanic ritual abuse, and she had signs of disassociative identity disorder, which we talk a lot more on our YouTube channel. We talk about that a lot more on uh, Through the Black, which is our YouTube channel. Um, I was in over my head. It was the first time I had encountered that. And so I ended up getting in touch with Russ. He kind of coached me through it, turned into a conference with Russ and Ellie Marzuli. And that was the first time I kind of got connected with Christian fringe people that were out there doing conferences, things. This happened back in 2012. Because of uh, getting to know Russ, I ended up getting to know Tom, who worked with Russ. And it spiraled out of control to the point where we were just taking lots of cases, working with lots of people. And it got to the point where we, we, we couldn't help as many people as we're reaching out for help. And so we finally decided to step it up and do something much larger that could affect more lives faster. And that's what this movie was born out of. Well, let's talk, let's talk about one of those lives. I mean, because like I said, I re, you know, both of you have been to our conferences and, and you've seen what goes on. We are fringe. Uh, we are not mainstream Christianity at Hear the Watchmen uh, whatsoever. Uh, uh, but we had a young man by the name of Nathan Reynolds who came in 2016 to the Dallas conference, uh, and the two of you prayed over him, I believe, uh, uh, and it's changed his life. He was on your show the other day, just an incredible guy. Is that the kind of thing that you're doing moving forward? Yeah, you know, I'll never forget that. That was a powerful night where um, Russ, of course, 
you know, he spoke and there's uh, excerpts of that in the film Detestable. And Nathan was there in the audience and he gave an invitation to, to come forward to get set free. And of course I worked with Russ for years. So I just kind of was dealing with people one by one. And I saw a, a young man over there who was face down on the carpet in that room. Just, he couldn't get any lower. And I, the only way that I could get to him is to lay all the way down with him and put my head next to him and just, you know, uh, start talking to him. And basically what happened is what we always do is uh, we lead through, we lead people through what's called a freedom encounter. And I did what I was trained to do. And I, I talked to him, I found out what was going on and I led him in a prayer of repentance and renunciation. And he got, uh, set free from some stuff that night. You know, I, I remember Nathan and I was in the middle of production of a film. Uh, we talked a little bit on email after that, but in the chaos of life, you know, it, he just kind of slipped away and it was just somebody else that I had worked with, you know, and he sends me a, uh, an email a couple months ago and just tells me everything God has been doing in his life and uh, how much it meant to him when, uh, you know, I prayed with him and all this stuff and we remember and, you know, he just, uh, it's just one of those lessons for me is you don't know who you're going to touch. You know, I was just being obedient that night. We were working with people and we prayed with a lot of people that night. And he's the one, he's, I remember him just because of his position on the floor. I never seen anything like it. He was just completely ready. He was ready. He was willing to, to get rid of it and to get set free. And, uh, he did. Well, and, and now today, Thomas, I mean, he's out there, uh, he has his own ministry. I mean, he's, he's started his own little business with something to do with coffee. Uh, and uh, he's out there now preaching the word. He's out there telling the truth, and he's out there working with other people who are in trouble. And, and that, I guess, is, is what really excites me about what the two of you are doing. Jared, I mean, what do you see out there in the world today? I mean, we have, like, if you've noticed on Drudge is now reporting about uh, there's witch stores. I think it's in Ohio, actually, Thomas. I mean, they have uh, uh, storefronts that are for witches. And, and the occult is, is just seems to be, the darkness just seems to be coming in. Where, where do you see us going, Jared, and what do you think we need to do? It's interesting. These things come and go in cycles, it seems. At the end of Satanic Panic in the early 90s, uh, survivors seemed to go underground as this topic was kind of squashed by mainstream secular organizations that were created to squash it. Satanism started flourishing in the darkness. Survivors had to go underground, but God is never taken by surprise. You know, the darkness never gets a step ahead of, of Christ and what he's doing in the work and lives of people in this world. And God always has his people stationed very particularly, specifically, and strategically in places to combat. And a lot of us have been doing this in the shadows, fighting along, you know, fighting fighting these evils in the shadows, unbeknownst to the churches and, and people in our lives around us. But it seems like, you know, God might be answering a prayer at this point where he's raising up more laborers for the harvest, as we're told to pray for in, uh, I believe, the book of Luke. And uh, that's what we see. That's one of the reasons why right now it seems like this is very interesting timing. Tom and I did not choose to be in this ministry. We did not decide that we wanted to make this film, and we have not wanted to necessarily work with survivors, but we're called to it. God has equipped us in a very specific way that allows us to be successful because of the gifting that he's given us. And so we've decided at this point, because the need is so great, and it seems like this is becoming a mainstream issue again, that it's time to start praying and creating more more laborers for a harvest. And so that's why Nathan is such a beautiful story. That night at Hear the Watchmen, it was myself, Russ, and Tom. We worked that chapel room that was set aside till one in the morning with an endless stream of people. It just did not end. We were exhausted. It was endless ministry. And like Tom said, you never can you never can guess what's going to happen from those brief interactions in the lives of other people. And now that we see Nathan out there doing these things, this is exactly what we are praying for that Tom and I have no no power, no ability, no special giftings that that other Christians don't have. We don't have any any more authority than any other Christian that bears the name and 
uh, of Jesus Christ as their their precious Savior. And so to see to see people learning about this, becoming aware of the topic, and then to see the Holy Spirit moving them off to do the same work is the most important thing. Because if it's just Tom, myself, and Russ, we're never really going to achieve much. It's going to take us all growing and learning and working and using the power of the Holy Spirit to set these people free. And we need to make we need to build a spiritual army. Well, amen. Amen to that. And then Thomas, you know, I have, I have seen you in action. I mean, I've seen both of you in action. Um, what, what do you think, what is the importance of people coming to uh, conferences, not, not just here, the Watchmen? I mean, that's self-serving for me to bring that up. But any of these Christian conferences where they're, they're telling the truth, not the, not the, uh, I'm going to get a lot of hate emails for this, but not the Joel Olstein Christianity, but the truth. Why is it important for people to get out there? Why is it important for people to talk with one another and talk to the two of you? Well, here's the thing, and uh, I've been to uh, several here the Watchman conferences. I've been, I've done a couple conferences myself years ago, and. Um, when people show up at the conferences, it's like coming home, okay? They're meeting people who are like-minded, who are kindred spirits, so to speak, and it recharges their batteries to be able to go back home and to deal with all the quote-unquote non-believers, so to speak, and all of the um, frozen people, the, the, the church, the, the dead body of Christ that they've got to deal with. I can't tell you how many people... And I'm thinking of the one in Dallas uh, specifically, the first one that we met Nathan at. So many people came up to us and they said, I had to leave my church. I had to leave my church. And it's heartbreaking. So when you go there and you meet other people, you don't feel so alone. And you know, even though we hear this comment a lot, I wish this was my church. But the thing is, it's not. And it's not going to be. And the Lord has us where he has us to do our work. And we do wish that we could all be together. But that's not the way that it's supposed to be. You know, Jared's in Texas. I'm in Ohio. We've, Nathan's in Colorado. You're, you know, out in the um, in the West. And God has us put in these places so we can do work where we're at. Um, but when we get to go to conferences, we get to recharge our batteries. We get to learn things quickly, you know, and very, you know, focused um, teachings that you want you, that you're not going to get to hear anywhere else. So uh, I, the, that's all good, but I think the fellowship is the most important and, and meeting the people and, and making those connections. And I, I've been doing them for years. I haven't done one in quite a while. I did one back in 2010 called the Last Days Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. And it was, you know, it was very successful. And from there, the conferences just started growing. I didn't have to do them anymore because I didn't know what I was doing. People like you come along, Mike, who actually know how to do a conference. And that takes the burden off of me. Now I can go make movies, right? So, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I would highly recommend find one, you know, that's that's close to you, one that you can get to, one of the, you know, that has speakers that you like and, and get out there and meet the people. You will not regret it. Uh, I, I, that's what you hear all week long is, man, I'm so glad to be here and people are happy. They're meeting people. It's like a camp meeting, right? Remember camp meetings? So, yeah, I, I would recommend getting out to a conference somewhere. So now we're, guys, uh, Jared, I mean, and, and Thomas, where are you guys going from here? What, what's next on, on uh, we're going to call you the dynamic duo for Christ fighting the darkness here. What are you guys, what's, what is the next step for the two of you? Tell them, Tom. Uh, right now we are in pre-production for our next film. And we, we are just lining up interviews. Um, we're going to be starting in, uh, in December. And then we, we're lining up some stuff for February. And we're going to be making a new film. The new film is called The Darkest of Red. It picks up where Detestable left off. We're going to get into more of the history of the blood sacrifices. We're going to get, uh, we're going to explain um, what they do, why they do it where they do it, who does it, and we're, we're going to just kind of focus on that part of, you know, of the satanic ritual abuse, uh, you know, and how that um, infiltrates all of culture everywhere in the Western world in, in different parts. So it, it's, it's going to be different, but we're going to, you know, in the first film, we, it was a, um, 
was a film directed at the body of Christ saying, hey, this is this stuff is real and you need to be aware of it and you need to do something about it. And this time we're going to go, we're going to do the same thing, but we're it's more established that it's real. Now we're going to get into some detail of why they do what they do and how important it is for Christians to be, you know, uh, to be diligent and, you know, to, to walk the walk so we can battle this stuff. Amen. Amen, brother. Well, listen, folks, the movie again, detestable. Uh, I hope you can see it there. I think you go to uh, detestablefilm.com, detestablefilm.com. Uh, how can folks find you guys? We have a YouTube channel. Uh, we are on, um, we have a website called Through the Black. We got a lot of websites, but detestablefilm.com is good. Throughtheblack.com, that's our YouTube channel. And uh, we've been uh, we've been doing that for months. We've got uh, we're moving up to 200 episodes, all teaching on spiritual warfare. And we have guests like Greg Reed, Russ Dizdar. We had Josh Tolley on the show. You can go back in our archives and see everybody that we had. So that's a good place. Go to YouTube and search through the black. Jared, what's what's uh, you're down there in Texas? I'm hoping I see you in March in Dallas. Uh, yeah, what's going I, on in your life? Well, yeah, I, I definitely I've been to hear the Watchmen the last two years. I've I've really enjoyed it. Um, I with Tom and I shooting this new film. I, you know, we our schedules are getting really crazy right now with all the traveling and stuff. So I I'm hoping I can be there again this year, especially to hang out with some of the listeners and people that we've gotten to engage with. But um, that's what it is right now, man. It's just uh, I have a full time job as most of us do to fund our ministry, you know, <laughs> so uh, ministries are often expensive to run, as you know, by booking hotels and uh, running websites and trying to organize these giant events. It's not cheap to do. It's not cheap to run conferences and it's not cheap to do movies. So, um, yeah, that's what we're doing. We, we work full time. And in our in our off time, we uh, we do ministry. We do our YouTube channel. We're making this new film. And uh, just like a lot of other people trying to build a platform that will reach uh, many lives and offer something back to this community. That's uh, this fringe Christian community that's changed all of our lives in some way. We just want to give back. Well, listen, I, I got to tell you guys, God bless both of you. I mean, it's an honor to uh, serve Christ with you. Um, you're right. You know, the Word of God is free. I, I get this all the time. Hey, you know what? Why are you charging money to come to, your, to this conference? I mean, the Word of God should be free. The Word of God is free. But the hotels, the plane fares, all that stuff for the speakers and the food, everything, that's not free. And uh, I, I appreciate everything both of you are doing. And again, folks, one more time, detestable. See this video. Check it out. Order the DVD. Go on their website. Spend some time. Help them out. Make a donation. Do something. Uh, because as I always say, I mean, you can do absolutely anything with Jesus in your heart, except nothing at all. These two guys are out there doing it day in and day out. They're fighting the darkness, stuff that a lot of us don't even want to go near. They're doing it with Russ Dizdar. So please go out there, help them out, spend some time uh, checking out their YouTube channel and their website. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning on a Saturday morning. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thank you so much, Mike. And, and folks, I mean, we can't go out, guys. We can't go out without mentioning this. It is uh, November 11th, and today is Veterans Day. We want to thank every single person who's watching this video today for your service to our country. If you're a veteran, God bless you. Thank you for everything that you did for us to defend our freedom and to allow us, guys, to do what we do. Uh, we owe it to all of you. So until the next time I see you here on the Watchman's Report, God bless each and every one of you. Again, thank you, Thomas and Jared, for spending time with us this morning. We'll see you again here soon on the Watchman's Report.